Jeffrey Lowell <laughs> is uh, back and better than ever joining us via Skype. Good morning, Dr. Jeffrey Lowell, Professor of Surgery and Pediatrics at Washington University. Good morning, McGraw and Kelly. How you guys doing? Hi, we're, doctor. We're doing great. Let's talk about Ebola because there's two different conversations going on. The news media will want to scare us out of our pants, and the doctors are saying nothing to be really worried about. So how hard is it to catch Ebola? It's hard to catch Ebola. You need to be... It's not airborne. Uh, the virus doesn't live for long outside the body, so it has to come from a body fluid, um, either feces or sputum or blood. And it has to, uh, it can't just touch your skin, it has to go in through one of your mucous membranes. So your, your mouth, your eyes, um, places like that. So it, it, is not, it is not easy to catch Ebola. Now people who do catch it are usually are the ones that are been dealing with people who have just died of Ebola, who have a very, very, very uh, heavy viral load and um, have all of the symptoms of Ebola, you know, with the diarrhea and uh, bad uh, cough and pneumonia and things like that. So this this is definitely. I have. I had. I was walking to work yesterday with a friend who was going to Dallas and said his wife was scared for him because he was flying to Dallas. I mean, how crazy is that? And this is somebody who probably hasn't gotten their flu shot yet, right? <laughs> this is what. This is what. We need to refocus, um, not that this isn't a horrible disease and is killing uh, many people in West Africa, but right now this is a West Africa problem where there is very little health care and there is very little food and water. Uh, here in the United States, we need to refocus on things that we are common and that we can do something about, like getting a flu vaccine, which kills thousands of people each year needlessly and it's airborne mm -hmm. and if you just come in contact with somebody and if you sit on a plane you could catch their flu and so you certainly want to be inoculated for something that dangerous absolutely true now that you know isn't quite as sexy as seeing people in hazmat suits uh decontaminating an apartment in in dallas however it is thousands and thousands of times more likely. Right. And I think the other interesting thing is that you're, if you have Ebola, the, the only time you're contagious is if you're showing symptoms, right? So if you're bleeding right. from the eyes, then you're contagious. And if you see someone bleeding from the eyes, you're probably going to stay away from them. Well, it's not just bleeding in the eyes. I mean, it mainly starts as a, a diarrheal illness. And, um, you know, the, the, the hemorrhagic part of this is the, is the very, very, very end stages of it. But it's, you know, this is something that none of us will see in our lifetime. We will see lots of people with flu, and we have the opportunity to, to try and prevent this with a flu vaccine. So yeah. we should all do this. Very smart. Good. A little reasoning from the good doctor <laughs> That's here. That's right. All right, let's uh, move on. What's this link between coffee beans and human genes? I'm listening very carefully on this one. Yeah, I was I was really interested to uh, see it too. It's um, there apparently now are now six different regions on the human DNA that are linked to coffee drinking behavior. They did this massive study where they looked at 120,000 people, how much coffee they drank a day. They scan their DNA and they look for similarities amongst them. And apparently, there's there's some overlap. Um, so that gives us some um, sense to the fact that you know some people you know if they they say that if they have a cup of coffee after 11 o'clock they can't sleep at night and they have people like me who you know I can drink coffee right before bed and it doesn't do anything to me so um, there apparently may be some genetic predisposition for this. When I was in college I would take those two no-dose yeah. pills and and fall right to sleep. <laughs> take two no-dose <laughs> and a jolt. I would I would I mean Just it would it would it would like do the opposite to me it would, <laughs> caffeine would like put me to sleep. Yeah, and swallow it with a jolt. Or... <laughs> yeah, it was the craziest uh, thing in the world. So, so what does that mean? So, it's just an interesting fact. I mean, there's nothing we can really. It's, just, it's interesting, but you know, I, I think people kind of knew the fact that there's all coffee may have different effects on people. Right. And I think this is lending a small amount of pseudoscience to it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there you go. And finally, doctor, you forwarded us this story about a police officer pulling over a mother and helping her out getting a car seat. Yeah, so this is uh, this was the hearts and minds story that I think is uh, you know maybe we should expand on this with all of the 
the horrible things that are going and going on in, in Ferguson and other parts of uh, the country and other parts of the world. You know, maybe this is the uh, the type of effort that we really need to to try and put the brakes on this and 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 turn things around. So this was the short story. Here was uh, a, a police officer pulled over a, a woman who. Uh, uh, had a uh, her child in the back seat that was supposed to be in a booster, but wasn't. But it turns out she couldn't afford to do so because uh, uh, they're very having uh, very hard times and lots of health problems in the family and no money. So instead of uh, the police officer citing her for for this, he said, "Meet me at Walmart." And he, they drove to Walmart together and he bought the booster seat for her for fifty five bucks. Yeah, it's a great story. Uh, that is a good story. good story. And, you know, so instead of, you know, giving her a ticket that she wasn't able going to be pay for, you know, she, uh, and the kid still wasn't going to be able to ride in a booster seat. Right. And now the kid is safer and, um, you know, it's a, it's, a good, it's a good thing to do. And maybe a few more of these random acts of kindness will go a long way. Dr. Jeffrey Lowell, thanks for bringing some, uh, some sense of uh, normalcy <laughs> to the Ebola conversation. Always good to hear from the experts. Doctor, be safe, and we'll talk to you next Wednesday. All right. Take care. Professor, Bye, professor of Surgery and Pediatrics at Washington University. He's also one of the foremost transplant doctors in all the land. Dr. Jeffrey Lowell has been uh, working with us now for uh, years, and uh, we thank him. Uh, 829, make it 830, traffic, weather, and then Cat Neville with Feast Magazine all coming up next.